Well, Mason, it's so nice to speak to you at this Fight Pass Invitational after your win there. How did it feel? Yeah, it felt great. I'm happy that I'm here getting the interview because uh, if I would have lost, then I probably wouldn't have got to talk to you. <laughs> Well, it's always nice to speak to you, especially after that beautiful Kata Katami submission in overtime. What openings did you see in order to get the submission? Yeah, uh, the thing with Pedro is he's super explosive, super springy, uh, like we had talked about before pre-fight, but he does fade a little bit after like eight, nine, ten minutes. Um, and he has a super dangerous guillotine, and he always guillotines everyone that tries to shoot on him. So my goal was just to make it a scrap, get him frustrated, uh, tire him out, and then shoot in once he was tired. That way his arms would be a little more gassed and hopefully I wouldn't get choked out. So it worked out. And we did see that guillotine attempt though on the edge of the mat. What was going through your mind in that moment? Because we, we couldn't see that your arms or your hands were locked. We could really only see your face getting a little bit red. Yeah. So it was probably from all of the, uh, the physicality that was going on on the mat. But what was going through your mind in that moment? Yeah, my face already gets red, like when I get super tired. But then if someone's squeezing it, it gets even more purple, you know? So um, I was in a safe enough position because I was already past his legs. So I felt like I wasn't going to get tapped and I just had to relax and wait for him because he was squeezing really hard. So um, if you noticed, I was slowly angling towards the north-south, and the more north-south that I get over him, the more the choke would have loosened up. So I was just, my first goal, my first concern was maintaining the position because uh, I don't get points until there's no more submission locked. So I didn't want to rip my head out, and then he scrambles up. So I wanted to secure the position and slowly work myself out of the choke. And what does it do to your opponent mentally when they, they think they might have the submission in the bag and then, you know, you wait it out and, and technically gain the advantage back? Oh, yeah, it's the worst. When you think you're going to tap someone and you're squeezing as hard as you can and you have all that adrenaline and then he gets out, it's like, oh, fuck, you lost everything and you have to start all over again. Well, like I mentioned earlier, super physical, very technical match. Was this the one that you were expecting tonight? It was exactly what I was expecting, um, but I'm even happier now that – it was, um, I, I think it was a super exciting match, especially because I feel like Pedro had the momentum in the regulation time, and then I really just put it into like that, that fifth or sixth gear in the overtime. Um, so I, I hope it was an exciting match for everyone because there was some momentum shifts. It wasn't just like super one-sided. And uh, yeah, it was pretty much the match I thought it was gonna be. Super exciting, and of course you re remain undefeated at the Fight Pass Invitational. What does it mean to you to be able to keep coming back and being successful here? I love this outlet so much um, since I've been competing here consistently. I'm able to stop worrying so much about teaching classes and seminars, and I can really just focus on being a full-time athlete. So I love having this outlet. It's my favorite promotion by far to compete on. Uh, Steven and Claudia and all everyone here always takes really good care of me. So I want to say thanks so much to all the staff here at the UFC uh, Apex Center. Everyone here is great, um, so it's always an amazing experience. Even if I came here and were to lose, I still would be grateful um, because everyone respects us as athletes. They take care of us. They pay us well. They fly us out. So um, I, I'm winning, so I like that part too. But even if I was to come here and lose, I would still be happy with the overall experience because we get treated with respect and uh, we get treated really well here. Well, it's really our honor too. And I, it's not an if you'll be back. It's definitely a when you'll be back. When can we expect to see you back and against who, if you could pick? Oh, uh, yeah, ne next event. And I want to be the main event. I don't care uh, who I go against. But, you know, obviously Craig Jones is the most popular guy in jiu-jitsu. I've had three matches with him already. But if he was willing to do another match, then I would do it just because I know that it would be a big match and it would be the main event. And if not, I think the next most popular guy is Nicky Rod. You know, those two guys um, are probably the, the one and two most popular guys in jiu-jitsu right now. And as we're seeing, it's not necessarily about um, the – most competitive matchups because Pedro was ranked number one in the world. He was ranked number seven pound for pound. He's ranked above um, Nicky Rod and Craig and a lot of other guys that are on the main event, co-main event. So it's not really about going for the highest ranked guy. It's about going for the most popular guy. And Craig and Nicky are the most popular guys. So um, I feel like those two matches will get me the main event for sure. And that's my goal. I just want to be in the main event and uh, I want to win and cement my, my pound for pound number one spot. Well, main event Mason, hopefully coming to you soon at the next FPI. Hopefully.